Hi guys and welcome to this video in which I'll be demoing Sharp Equusnet Plus Smart TV platform and show you menus, settings, connectivity and some tweaks along the way. I'll be demoing this on LC-49 CUG8052, so 49 inch UHD model from 2017, LCD screen, 60Hz, uh, some basic picture processing and so on. But important HDR support. Nowhere on the box I saw HDR, yet this is a great example. This is game from PlayStation 4 Pro. When I press info, I see here HDR and it really detects HDR10 signal. Okay, so first before I show you menus, I want to show you how long does it take to bring this TV back from standby. So I'll be turning it off right now and now let's wait a couple of seconds and now I'll press power button again and let's see how long will it take so LED on the right changed from red to white and I'll tell you it will be around 20 seconds before we see actual content coming from HDMI but same goes if you have a uh, uh, antenna or satellite input and there on the right hand side you see initializing so it will take 10 to 15 seconds extra before TV becomes fully responsive um, okay so initializing is gone so TV is fully okay now I'll press menu button and when I press it, I see very simple menu at the bottom. So colored boxes with Netflix, YouTube and different options here. And as I come to the last option, I can go back and so on. So everybody knows Netflix, YouTube, same. More apps, this opens another sub menu with Aquasnet Plus, which is uh, App Store. Uh, weather information and built-in web browser. Now if I go back to sources, here you see again at the bottom area, all inputs this TV offers, not including USB. So here you see HDMI's and analog inputs and this antenna and satellite inputs. Good thing is that you can change names of inputs, for example HDMI 1 for me is PlayStation 4 and I'll show you a bit later how to do that. Next is media which um, shows you if you have USB connected, Miracast for casting content from your smartphone to the big screen and media server, in this case I have Synology web server so I can access video music and photos on it and played it without any issue. Also if I have uh, if you have a computer or something else on the network it will be detected here because this TV has uh, certification by the LNA Alliance so during the test this was working really well. Next we have picture which will of course open picture settings and uh, if you take a look at number of settings available, you will see that this number is really, really small and limited. And that's true. And the thing is, if I go to movie, which is the most accurate by default, and I want to increase contrast or white level to be precise. If I do that, picture mode will switch automatically to personal means that movie cannot be altered in any way. However, you can mimic, you can copy these settings to personal and basically get same uh, in this preset. Uh, here one setting which is important is this backlight. So this control will uh, control how bright the picture is. So uh, it doesn't have light sensor. So this is the only way you can adjust how bright the image is. For example, if you're watching content during uh, evening or night, then you want to reduce this value. 
Uh, as you can see, there is no game mode. However, I will talk about uh, connectivity with PS4 Pro in a bit. So now let me go back to home menu and we still have sound. So sound menu offers different options and you already noticed that there is no explanation for each option. So you can just toggle it and see whether or not it will work or not. Uh, even though DTS is mentioned on the box and you see DTS here for sound processing, if you play videos on your USB or through network, you will not get a DTS sound. So DTS is only for audio processing. TV also offers digital output, so you can get a stereo or 5.1 output to your home theater system. I managed to do so with my system, so this works fine. And you can adjust, in this case, audio delay and some basic controls. Next we have settings, and that's last option. So settings, again, brings this sub-menu with network, time, lock and setup. If you go to network, you see uh, this is how you're connecting TV to the internet, so via cable or Wi-Fi. For this purpose I'm using cable. And you have network information, IP address and so on, if you need that information. Um, next is, I think, yeah, Netflix setting. This is just this ESN number for identification and firmware version. Time. Basic information, if you need sleep timer, if you want TV to turn off itself after 10 or up to uh, 240 minutes, then you do that here. And also you can control time zone and auto standby. Next we have lock menu. If you press by default four zeros, then you get this options. You can set password here and parental control and so on. Finally, we have setup. Here we have different options, starting uh, from language selection, audio language, subtitles, hearing impaired can uh, select this option. If there is no signal, by default you will get blue screen, but for me this is really old school, so I rather watch a blank screen without any color on it. If you have USB connected that is capable of recording uh, live TV, you can adjust settings within this PVR file system. And software update of the TV can be done through one of these two options. Either you will bring firmware on USB or you will search for it online. Here you can reset the TV to default, turn on or off HDMI CEC, Consumer Electronics Control, HDMI edit, this is important in this particular case as I'm feeding a UHD HDR signal then you need to switch to enhancement by default is in standard so we will not get full color resolution and also uh, UHD HDR up to 60 frames per second which is important for gaming. Here you have uh, also HBB TV, which is disabled now because we are on HDMI input. Version info about software. Uh, final option is source edit. Now we're coming back to this. So if you want to adjust, for example, uh, HDMI uh, 2, here I can type whatever I want. I can say that this is... Uh, Blu-ray and so on, and it's really easy to be done, so enter, okay, source, then we go to the next one, and so on. So it's really easy and you can adjust this um, to suit your needs. Next, I will show you live TV, and this remote in this aspect, so for quick switching from one, one input to the next, works really well. So. Uh, Okay, you have Netflix, YouTube button, and also Net Plus uh, direct buttons, but you can also launch TV 
just by pressing one button. And uh, some of you wanted to see how quickly TV is switching from one channel to the other. So now I'll go through several. So here in Croatia we have this in standard definition, but at least in 16 by 9 format. And now I'll focus on NOAA TV because NOAA TV is sending HBB TV. Uh, signal so if I press red button I will get this additional information and you know without going online without using web browser I can read about news and what's happening in the world and next I want to show you Netflix and YouTube so if I press Netflix button it will switch automatically to that input to that source sorry but same goes if TV is in standby I just press Netflix button and it will bring me to this app uh, I tried streaming different content uh, and I managed to get 4k resolution so I'll show you one example so you see it says ultra HD 4k but it doesn't say HDR so I couldn't get uh, UHD and HDR on this TV and same goes for YouTube so only UHD resolution but SDR okay um, I will not play any, any content from uh, Netflix but I can start YouTube and as I'm now pressing YouTube button within Netflix app I cannot do that I need to be on one of inputs real inputs like TV and I need to exit Netflix before I do that, which is limiting, definitely, compared to other TVs on the market. So if I press YouTube button, now we'll see what's happening. Okay, so if I run this video and I have these stats up, you see UHD resolution, but not HDR. I'll go back to Netflix because if you're a Netflix user and you're not a big fan of soap opera effect, then this TV is not for you. The thing is, within Netflix app, you cannot access picture options. So what you end up is standard picture mode with soap opera effect. And actually soap opera effect is present throughout all inputs and all picture modes and there is no way you can disable it okay um, as I have this uh, game on I'll just mention that in terms of input lag this TV uh, doesn't have game mode and it takes around 47 milliseconds for it to display picture from the source uh, as modern TVs have game modes and are in this 20 to 25 milliseconds range, this is not so good result. However, for not demanding gamers, it will be fine. So if you're getting this TV for a uh, bedroom or for your kids to play games and they're not really serious about them, it will be fine. Another thing I want to mention is, as you can see, I have this wireless speaker and wireless headphones. Unfortunately, this TV doesn't offer Bluetooth, uh, so there is no way to connect those. However, there is 3.5 millimeter output and you can connect your wired headphones, for example, and improve sound quality. Even though TV speakers were tuned by Harman Kardon, uh, they sound okay. But again, for movies, for TV shows, if you want really good effects and surround, you need to connect this TV to external AV receiver and speakers or at least use a soundbar. Another topic that I want to show you is connectivity with uh, USB keyboards and mice. So I have this Rocket Sova lap board and this mouse. So um, if I press Windows button there is no home menu 
and interaction is really basic so if I bring menu now I can go left and right so now let's go to web browser and now let's see if I go to Wikipedia you see pointer is working so I select language and as you can see response is not so bad actually so uh, if you want to read about something and uh, check photos it's okay so if I go to more apps and click Aquasnet Plus okay so here you have different apps uh, and they are separated in different categories if I go to all apps you see there that there are 206 apps total and the thing is you don't need to install them but you actually just uh, click on any and it will work now as there are so many different apps uh, you may want to filter them somehow there is a choice to filter them by country but you can also add them to your apps folder and you do that by pressing green button you see that install it's actually so if I press it you will get notification that app has been added and now if I go all the way to my apps you, you will see it listed here right? and you can open it from here you cannot add any of these apps uh, to home menu but you will always have to go through this uh, net plus uh, portal And this slowly brings us to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful that you learned something about Aquas Net Plus Smart TV platform. As you saw, it's not perfect. Uh, it's simple, but it's slow and it's not perfectly stable. Uh, for me, especially regarding picture quality and lack of adjustments uh, and lack of complete adjustments, for example, in Netflix app, for me, I would spend a bit more and get a TV from some other brand uh, like Samsung or LG or Sony or Panasonic or Philips but anyway those five uh, offer more controls and more accurate picture quality and more uh, flexibility and more multitasking ability compared to this platform. Thank you once again for watching. If you have any questions, if you learned something else, some other trick which I didn't show, please let me know in the comment section. And I'll see you in some other video very soon. Bye.